Hello everyone. Welcome to our presentation, Stationarity in Time Series Data. Before we discuss stationarity, let's see what time series data means. Data collected for same entity for different time periods. Thus, a time series data consists of observations on one or more variable over time. Now, what is stationarity? A time series data is said to be stationary if the mean and the variance remain constant over time and the covariance depend only on the distance between the two time periods. To understand what's the difference between a stationary and a non-stationary data set, let's take an example of a dart game. Imagine you are playing a game of dart. You throw darts at the target and record your score for each throw. Now just let's consider two scenarios. Scenario 1. Darts are being thrown with the same level of skill throughout the game and the average score remains the same. The variability is constant. This means the game is stationary as the performance is not changing over time. Scenario 2. In this case, the, the dart throwing skills improves over time. You start hitting a higher scores. The average score keeps on increasing. This indicates a trend and the game is not stationary because the performance is changing over time. Now why is stationary important in time series data? Stationary data is crucial for reliable statistics, consistent relationships, accurate forecasting, etc. It improves analysis and enhances the reliability of derived insights. To test whether a data is stationary or not, we'll be using the augmented dickey fuller test. The ADF test checks for unit roots indicating non-stationarity. If a unit root is present, the data lacks stable mean and is influenced by past values. On the other hand, if the test indicates the absence of a unit root, it implies stationarity and consistent mean over time. Now, what if after the ADF test, we found out that the data is not stationary? One of the techniques which we'll discuss in our presentation today is differencing. Differencing basically involves subtracting each observation from its previous observation. It helps to remove trends and seasonality, making the data suitable for analysis and modeling. Now we'll just move to the Jupyter Notebook and see how the ADF test is conducted and see whether the data is stationary or not. Before we do our ADF test, we'll just import the libraries needed for it. Pandas, ADFlow from stats model and matplotlib. We'll import a CSV file. The data here represents rice and wheat production from the year 1964 to 2021 in India. The data has been taken from RBI handbook. Now before conducting the test, we'll just plot the data against time. For simplicity purpose, we have just ta taken the rise data. As you can see, the data shows an upward trend and the mean and variance are not constant over time, which indicates non stationarity in the data. Now, before we move on with our area of test, we just need to formulate the hypothesis. The null hypothesis states the time series has unit root, which means it's non stationary, and the alternative hypothesis states the time series is stationary. Now, we'll just have a look at the area of test which we have run and the results which we have extracted from it. The ADF statistic, which is 3.04, which is 
positive which shows presence of trend in our data while the p-value is 1.0 which is greater than the commonly chosen significance level of 0.05. With such high p-value, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. And if we compare the critical values with the ADF statistic, it's quite clear that the ADF statistic is greater than the critical values at 1% level, at 5% and 10% level, which further supports the failure to reject the null hypothesis. Since it's very clear that the data we have is non-stationary, we'll try to transform it into a stationary data using differencing. Now, as earlier, we'll just plot the data, which is the difference data, over time and see whether there is presence of trend or not. As we can see from the data, there is no trend and the mean and variance seems constant over time. Now to further confirm this, we'll just run the ADF test on the difference data. To running the test, the ADF statistic we get is minus 12, which is negative which shows that there is no trend in the data while the p-value which is almost closer to zero is less than the commonly chosen significance level of 0 0.05 with this we can reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis and if we compare the critical values adf statistic we see the adf statistic is lesser than all the critical values with this we can reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis that the data is stationary.